death threats Hunter S. Thompson and the Dalai Lama. In the summer of 1995, on a sizzling hot Saturday morning, I received a death threat written in large what looked to be blood letters at the downtown 7th Street post office. Across the wall above my P.O. box, the letter said, Ron Whitehead will die August 20th. My P.O. box was full of mail, including a letter from Jim Carroll and a large hand crayon colored art package filled with signed books from Allen Ginsberg. The postal inspector and 32 police officers took photos and interviewed me, asking, Do you have enemies? The Louisville Free Public Library main branch, 4th and York, was having a big exhibit of my work, walls covered with posters, glass cases filled with signed books and handwritten letters. On the Monday morning after the death threat, I discovered that someone had defaced the published in heaven, never give up poster, calling the Dalai Lama and me terrible names, plus calling us anti-American, telling us to get the hell out of America. For nights and nights, there were phone calls, hello, hello, click, no response. For nights and nights, there were car doors slamming, tires squealing at 2 and 3 and 4 a.m. Memo died, Louverine Agleheart Render, Mama's mother, my grandmother. After the funeral at the Centertown Baptist Church, I loaded my family into the rental car and headed west for a 5,000-mile, two-week road trip. We drove 24 hours nonstop, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, Pikes Peak, Independence Pass, Aspen, Woody Creek, to Owl Farm. My, my kids knew about Hunter S. Thompson. My oldest son, Nathaniel, and my daughter, Ronnie, had met him in New York City a year earlier. They had been two of the 150 young people I took with me to attend and participate in the 48-hour non-stop music and poetry insomniacathon I produced to kick off New York University's week-long 50-year celebration of the Beat Generation as we pulled up in the night and passed through the vulture-protected gateway to Hunter S. Thompson's Owl Farm front door. Loud speakers in the yard were cranked all the way up with god-awful growls and screams of what sounded like a bear eating a baby. Hunter offered me cocaine and marijuana and bourbon. He signed a hundred copies of He Was a Crook, the Nixon obituary, published in Heaven poster. He asked me to read it to him. We exchanged gifts, long talks, good time. Jack Nicholson called three times further into and through the night. Non-stop, I drove to 261 Columbus Avenue, North Beach, City Lights, San Francisco, where we hooked up with my friend Lawrence Ferlinghetti, who took us to the Chinese restaurant down the hill. After the meal, one of my kids asked for a fortune cookie, which pissed the waiter off. He said, that American, not Chinese. Back at City Lights, we hung out for hours. Lawrence gave each of us $100 worth of books. I gave him the Publish in Heaven. He was a book poster. Hunter signed for him, plus he bought hundreds of copies of the limited edition poster, plus others I had brought. Poem posters by Allen Ginsberg and Gregory Corso and Herbert Hunky and Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Diane De Prima and William S. Burroughs and others. We wandered Chinatown and Fisherman's Wharf and, and Coit Tower and Golden Gate Bridge where Nathaniel yelled, Hey, look! And we turned to see him standing on the railing, not holding on to anything, the wind blowing hard, sailboats blowing the distance. I said, get the hell down right now. Damn, another close call. That boy has nerves to steal. through National Park, Yosemite, Sequoia, Painted Desert, the Grand Canyon. In the night, my youngest son Dylan opened his eyes and recited the last 20 pages of John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. He didn't miss a word. His eyes were glazed, staring. I pulled over and watched and listened, checking reference the book which I lifted from his lap. He had just finished reading it before he fell asleep. As soon as he said the last word of the book, he closed his eyes and went back to sleep. Astonished, I drove on into the night. As we unpacked, I went to visit Hunter's mom, Virginia. Hunter had asked me to keep an eye on her because more and more people were bothering her, claiming to be friends of Hunter, trying to get inside information for unapproved biographies. So that was the beginning of my friendship with Virginia Thompson, a remarkable lady, retired librarian who loved her bourbon. She called off and invited me to visit. At the end of each call, she said, Oh, Ron, please bring me some bourbon. You'll have to sneak it in. They won't let me have it here. So I did, and the first thing she said, when I arrived was, I promise not to talk about Hunter today.
but after her second glass of bourbon, Hunter was her main topic of conversation for the next several hours and the rest of the bourbon. Virginia was a delightful person. I sure saw Hunter in her. After that first visit with Virginia, I went home and took a nap, then drove 15 hours to Cambridge, Massachusetts. With only enough money for gas, I couldn't find a place to piss without having to pay, so I found a spot in the middle of a parking lot, opened the door, leaned over, and pissed. I didn't have money for a hotel, so I slept for two hours in my old Nissan Sentra at a gas station on the expressway. I woke up with my son Dylan and the Dalai Lama in the back seat. I was having a lucid dream. They gave me a long talk, words of encouragement, letting me know I was on the right path to persevere. Then when I really woke up, I drove back into Cambridge Park by the Charles Hotel and walked to the Charles River. I sat on a bench at sunrise. I prayed and meditated as rowers rode, and as the sun rose, I walked to the Charles Hotel where I had been invited to meet the Dalai Lama. He loved the Never Give Up poem. I had written April 1994 in response to the message he gave me. The Dalai Lama took my right hand in both his hands. He looked deep into my eyes and said, it's okay to be happy. The Dalai Lama bowed. Then I drove from Cambridge to Louisville where I took a nap, took care of some business, then drove to New York City to JFK Airport where I boarded a plane to Amsterdam for my first performance tour of the Netherlands. Postscript. The postal inspector turned my death threat investigation over to the FBI. The FBI agent interviewed me over the phone. He said, call back in a week. I called back. He said, no news. Call back in a week. I called back in a week. He said, sorry. Somehow we've lost your file. Post, postscript. His Holiness the Dalai Lama has the published in heaven never give up poster displayed in his private office in Dharamsala, India and I finally realized it is okay to be happy.